also sometimes have a, an overstated um, assessment of their own impact. I mean, I think that one of the things that certainly I've noticed, again, in a past like working in, in journalism is that folks who, who, who work in the media, reporters and such, think that you know, we are the window on the world. We are having, we do have this linear sort of impact. One of the things I think I mentioned later on is uh, the discussion of, of young women and eating disorders and, and the rise and prevalence of eating disorders in that same chapter about you know, how all the behaviors around weight that we seem to be hearing and, and discussing with the media as one source seem to be extreme. Uh, whether it's you know, young women purportedly going on websites to you know, get tips on how to become anorexic, which is a horrible thing, to you know, all the way to the childhood obesity epidemic to you know, when folks decide that they're going to lose weight, um, it's not a private or allegedly, purportedly not a private affair. I'm just going to go off and you know, not eat as much and you know, uh, do more exercise. What the media suggests is that it has to be done great zeal at a boot camp on the biggest loser so that you know and then of course all the folks on, on on shows like that have more severe issues than maybe the average person does but again it gets back to you know a combination I guess of, of, of sources of information of, uh, of, of, of bits of information that you know out of which meaning and, and behavior come not you know not just the media you know, ramming it down our throats. Uh, there was a show that VH1, the cable channel, ran for a while called Behind the Music, where they would talk about the career of uh, an act, a big, you know, a very popular act, the Beatles, U2, someone like that. And the narrative was always kind of the same, you know, hard scrabble band, hard scrabble beginnings, they hit a lot of success, then their temptations, they overcome the temptations, and they go on to, you know, continue their success. But what I had noticed and I think I talk about it a little bit anyway, is that it doesn't seem to take as much achievement to get your own behind the music episode. And this is not at all, again, uh, a criticism of the music of the bands who, you know, TV producers now think have done enough to merit a show. But it just suggests that, you know, we're always, the not even that the bar has been lowered, or I'm not sure what the metaphor is, but that you can have a legacy, it's almost like, Chia pet in a way you can you can have a legacy instantly. When you were younger when I was younger. It was a fairly finite universe of sources. I mean, we had three television networks when I was growing up. It was the Newark Evening News that we'd get, you know, maybe a morning and an afternoon paper, and that was pretty much it. We'd see a movie every so often, you know, rarely, you know, because it was a fairly expensive, you know, proposition, I guess. Um, but today, there's just such a constant exposure through all of the devices that we now have. Um, our disposal smartphones and Hulu and things of that nature, but we can pretty much immerse ourselves. Uh, I don't want to go completely over, over the top and say 24/7, but um, we can, you know, be connected to the media in some ways, in some respects, all the time. I mean, it, it's a more constant presence in our lives, and so it's again nothing in this is, in, I hope, is, is taken as an indictment of. of call to, uh, like Jerry Manders' famous book a few years ago, The Arguments for the Elimination of Television, but just a way to sort of think about, you know, what messages or what narratives are being suggested um, by all of that or through all of that exposure to uh, all of those different expanded range of media outlets. Those panics, especially today when we talk about, you know, the, the Twitterverse and, and, and some of the new tools at our disposal, part of the narrative is talking about panic. Um, part of the discussion about how impactful the media are is the media talking about how impactful they are, about the panic that ensues uh, when, and again, this briefly just goes back to our addiction discussion where, you know, the, the number one addiction that we found in our very beginning research is, you know, constantly talking about I'm addicted to my smartphone. And that can have a couple of, I guess, effects in using that word advisedly. It, it, it just should be that folks take a step back and say, okay, you know, it's okay if my son or daughter or whomever spends a little more time on Facebook, so long as nothing untoward is happening. But that, you know, it, 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 it's sort of used by the media to reinforce the fact that, you know, if you are a true citizen of our age, you know, you should be, you 
should have all these devices at your disposal and be constantly, you know, hooked up.